What's up guys, it's McNulty here. Welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to have a look at the new season four costumes. Now this wasn't something that I was expecting. It just sort of come out of the blue. Um, and it seems like I'm gonna get my own chance to grate on these season four heroes because um, the costumes have caused some controversy. Um, you know, that's to say the least because they are not as impressive as everybody thought. They're not as different as everybody was expecting. Um, but I think that there may be some things that a few people are missing out. So we're gonna go ahead and have a look at these new costumes today for the season four heroes. And we've got four costumes to look at. So we're gonna start off with this lovely lady, Elizabeth. And Elizabeth has just received a costume which looks like a wedding gown. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, she's in love with, is it Fog or Moreau? I can't remember now from the season four storyline. It's a terrible storyline. But anyway, um, it looks like, you know, he's finally popped the question and she is ready to get married. So um, let's have a little look at her and let's see what these costumes are all about. So um, first of all, uh, she's going to have the family bonus, which is the standard Underwild family bonus, where they spawn an Underwild gem on the board. We all know that one. I'm not going to go over it. The gem spawns, etc. Um, it does damage, and depending on how many heroes you can have, a certain amount of gems or a certain amount of chance to spawn an Underwild gem. They can be pretty helpful in your battles. Um, I've had more than a few where I think an Underwild Gems finished off the hero. So I think that is a good uh, family bonus to keep in mind for these heroes. Now they do also get this costume bonus now. And these costume bonuses have been adjusted. And there is a big balance update coming in version 58 of the game. Um, where the costume bonuses are going to be adjusted once again. Um, but I think I may do something separate on that. But for now they do benefit from the big mana bonus in the costume. So she's got an attack bonus of 5%, 5% defense, 10% on the health, and 5% mana bonus. The mana bonus is the one that we all care about. That's the one that we all want because it helps us to get them sped up to where we can use them within three tile matches um, with a level... Jesus, what is it now? At the 5% mana bonus, you can pretty much use any mana troop if you've got the mana node on the talent tree as well. Um, but yeah, you, you, you're definitely going to benefit from that costume bonus. So straight away, there's a reason to want the costume, especially if you do already have one of these heroes in your roster. Now, the passive for Elizabeth is the buff duration increase. So the duration of the first three buffs she receives is increased by one turn. It's a pretty decent passive as well. In fact, all the passives for the season four heroes are quite useful in their own little special ways. Um, now, the art on this hero is not great. Um, I say that just because it looks a little bit like fake. Um, I don't mind the comical art, but if you look at the original costume, there was at least a bit of effort like put into the hair and the detailing and things like that. And sorry if I'm getting a bit weird and you don't really care either way, but um, even like the down to the spider on her walking stick. now. Here, um, it's just not the same. I mean, just it looks a little bit lazy. It looks like they've just pasted a face onto a background, in my humble opinion. <laughs> but let's have a look at her stats and let's see what the difference is. So in her original version, we had 806 attack, 790 on the defense and 1592 on the health. So really nice. Um, balanced stats, quite a survivable hero, and she was super frustrating for a long time and very difficult to deal with. Uh, one of the first fiend summoners where the fiend gave an effect um, to the hero, which was very, very frustrating. Now, in her new version, we've got 821 attack, so slightly higher on the attack, 798 on the defense, slightly higher on the defense as well, nearly 800 defense, which is decent and 1,540 health, so really good stats right across the board um, for the costume version. I think I like the costume version stats just a little bit better. Now, her special skill is running at average speed, 
and it's called The Bride's Kiss. Of course it is. <laughs> She's getting married, don't you know? So, in terms of the special, we had 175 damage to all enemies on the old special. She's now got 165 damage to all enemies. So she's lost 10% damage, but she's received about 10% extra um, in the, uh, well, not quite 10% extra, but an extra amount in the attack. If you add the costume bonus with the extra 5% attack, you're probably looking at um, that extra 10% not being missed between the two. Hope that makes sense. Um, now, she summons a spider fiend for all enemies. Same as before, the fiend damages its target with 41% attack every turn. All right, the old costume was 43% attack every turn. Um, so again, the attack on the fiend is slightly lower. Um, that is also going to not really make much of a difference because of the increase on the costume bonus and the increase in her attack stat as well. The spider fiend then absorbs sorry the spider fiend absorbs healing and it disappears after absorbing a healing amount equal to 40 percent of its target's maxed health so this is a big big difference between the two and i know that some people who've looked at these heroes have just gone over it and not even sort of given it a second thought and just said well yeah the costume is just the exact same special as the original and in some ways it is but in other ways they're a lot better um, well, at least this one is. So the Spider Fiend on the old costume would absorb healing equal to 28% of its target's max health. And the new one is up to 40% of its target's max health. The reason this makes such a big difference with this hero is that you get a lot of healers that can easily heal away a fiend which is taking or absorbing 28% health. And if the heal fires off in turn 2 or turn 3, um, there's probably only going to need to be about 15% health or 20% health to get rid of the fiends. Um, and then you can just carry on as normal. With this one though, even after a turn or two, the fiends still got to absorb maybe an extra 30% health. But a 40% heal is a heal equivalent to a Rigard or a um, ex Nulfod. He's got 40% now. Um, some heroes or a lot more heroes are not going to be able to remove the fiends. And remember with Elizabeth's fiends, they give a effect, a negative status effect. So that's the last part of this special. So let's read it. So when a summoned, when summoned, the spider fiend gives minus 28% mana generation for the owner for as long as the owner has spider fiends and this effect can't be cleansed. So that is all important. And in fact, it's a bigger mana decrease than um, was received with the original version because the Spider Fiend was 24% reduced mana generation for its owner. The effect also could not be cleansed because the effect was attached to the Fiend. So what am I saying about this costume? Yes, it is the same special as the original, but there is a huge difference in a few ways. So... The biggest difference is, is that the fiend is going to be much more difficult to remove. And when the fiend is on your enemies, they're getting reduced mana generation, which is the main reason that you want Elizabeth on your team. Um, and people were using her as a red tank for a long time because of that reduced mana generation. It can buy you that time that you need um, to be able to fire your specials off before the enemy does. Um, if you're using her on an attacking team and if you're in defense, she can buy time for some of your other heroes. Now, as far as what position to put Elizabeth in, I would not be putting her on the wing just because she takes too long to fire. I would potentially put her on the tank if you are running red tanks in your alliance. She could be a good option, um, but most likely you're going to be using Elizabeth on the flank position. Um, she could be either on the left or the right flank. It doesn't really matter. Um, but the effect with the fiends for everyone is super annoying. She's going to need a bigger heal now to remove the fiends that she's giving. Um, so, yeah, I don't mind this costume. Honestly, I think it is. It's not completely different. I mean, it would have been amazing if she did something like summons minions for the 
you know, that when they hit, they reduce the mana generation and, you know, something else like that. However, I don't think that she's as bad as everybody says she is. So I'll give the bride um, her due and I'll give her a little bit of love. So yeah, she's she's a pretty decent hero. And I think with the costume bonus, um, she could definitely be usable. Um, so yeah, maybe an A grade, no, maybe a B plus um, for her. Now, Lepiota. Lepiota is an amazing hero. I do have her and she's not leveled yet, but just because I had to prioritize leveling purple tanks. Otherwise, I would definitely have leveled her and she is on her way up. Um, the main thing about Lepiota is that she was able to remove a hero from the battle and that you're able to ghost tiles through that hero. So let's see what the difference is now. Um, so she is now of the wizard class. She was of the um, sorcerer class, probably a bit of a downgrade to be fair. Um, she does get the same family bonus and the same costume bonus. So we won't go over those again. Um, and she does have this passive. So this passive works well for Lepiota um, because you need her to stick around as long as possible, trust me. Um, so the way it works is that the first time she receives damage um, from a special skill, the damage she receives is reduced by 20%. That 20% is super useful, especially if you've just taken a hit from somebody like Jove or Anne. Um, in fact, Anne, I believe in the new update is going to be getting a reduction in her damage. I saw from she's going to go down from 550 to 450, which is going to make a lot of people very upset. <laughs> but uh, good for me. Lucky for me, I don't have her. Um, so great costume bonus, great passive for Lepiota. Now her special skill the well let's look at her stats first sorry so stats wise 795 yeah it's okay uh 834 on the defense and 1522 on the health that is nice because she's very defensively built and again like i said before she's less of an attacker more of a specialist hero so you really want her to stick around as long as possible um in the old version the stats were very balanced 819 816 and 1494 I do prefer the stats on this new version because they're more leaning towards the defense side. And as I said, it's just for survivability, which is great. I'm not as um, down on the art with this one as I was with the other one, although I do think that her ears could use a little bit of work. Um, and I'm not sure why they've done that to her nose. It kind of just makes her look a bit piggish. Um, you know, she was already on the verge of it there, but yeah, I do like the art for the original better than this version. Um, now the special skill, let's get straight to it. So Undying Incantation is the new special running at fast speed. So Lepiota will remove all status effects and stacks from the target, even status effects and stacks that are otherwise undispellable or uncleansable. So it's the exact same thing as her original one. First thing she does is just remove all status effects and stacks. Then she dealt 158% damage to the target. She is now going to be dealing 150% damage to the target. And this will be lower than her original version because as you can see, she's got a lower attack stat. So even with the attack bonus of 5%, this is going to be a smaller hit and her hit already is absolutely abysmal not abyssal abysmal um the target shifts into a go abyss ghost form while in abyss ghost form the target will receive 147 damage each turn now in the old one the target would receive 93 damage each turn so there is a definite increase in terms of the damage that the target receives each turn. I just want to see whether that increases. Yes, it does. So if you do add limit breaks to this hero, the um, damage will increase to 121 each turn, which means that in the costume version, it should increase as well. So there you go. So you'll be dealing 150 damage up front, but then 203 damage each turn. And this, I think, lasts for four turns. So that's going to be, while the target's in ghost form, they're going to take a total of 800 and, 
what's three times four shoot 12 312 damage i mean 812 damage which is quite a lot of damage and there's nothing you can do to remove that effect um so yeah you can guarantee 812 damage with the old version you guaranteeing about 600 um let me try and do the maths eight times four is shit 32 um, to 832 or 632 damage, um, which is also a pretty decent amount. And that's something that a lot of people forget about with Lepiota. She doesn't hit hard initially, but while the target's in ghost form, they're actually going to receive a pretty decent amount of damage. Um, so, you know, if they had like five or 600 health before they went into ghost form, before the, the effect ends, they're going to be dead, basically. Um, so, uh, the yeah sorry i got a bit distracted there so while in abyss ghost form the target can't gain mana and can't be healed by special skills but is immune to normal attacks special skill attacks status effects and stacks yeah we know that that's fine um the abyss ghost form lasts for four turns so that is the same um and the last enemy left in the battle can't be shifted into abyss ghost form so that is the same for both of them as well Okay, so do I like this one better than the original version? Um, frankly, yes. <laughs> they get the same ether talent, which is the special armor. So that works in conjunction with the passive. I'm not sure if it adds to the passive. So that 40% plus an extra 20%, so 60% um, against special skills. And that will trigger for the first three times. But I do think that it actually works really well for this hero um and i'm just looking at these stats with the second limit breaks on man they they're ridiculous um you wouldn't really need to second limit break this hero you might want to do the first limit break just because it does um give her a little bit of extra survivability um and word on the grapevine is that we'll be seeing some kind of reset ethers um being introduced into the game pretty soon um so that will be really useful because you could sort of strip some old heroes and maybe pop some ethers i mean some uh, yeah some ethers some some normal ethers her way um so yeah i do like this version better than the original there's not huge changes there's subtle changes and there's small changes um but for me the biggest thing about this new version is that increased damage um while the targets in ghost form um because i mean with the old version if you didn't limit break um you can only really chop away about 380 ish um with this one if you don't limit break you're going to be chopping away a huge amount so like at least five 550 um in terms of the health of the target so yeah good hero very good control hero if you know how to use her and that is probably enough said about lepiota so let us move on because we've got two more we have got good old dr moreau um, I think this is the guy that Elizabeth is obsessed with. Um, so Moreau is now of the rogue class. Um, that is sweet to see. So rogue class is a fantastic class. He gives, gets the chance to dodge. He was a paladin, which wasn't as good for him, to be fair. He does benefit from the same costume bonus. And his passive is, again, the special skill damage reduction, which we won't go over again, but it is a good passive. Now, stats-wise... The costume version is going to have 798 attack, 802 on the defense. Well, that looked weird. Um, 802 on the defense and 1592 on the health. So really balanced stats across the board. I know I use that word a lot, but he is. Um, and he was slightly lower on the defense in the old version, which um, I wasn't mad about because he does have a pretty solid hit, 270 to the target and nearby. Now, the new version is going to be casting a special called Blinding Knowledge. And you can see it looks like he's just um, graduated from uni, university, college, whatever you call it. Um, this is probably him going into college. This is him leaving. <laughs> um, but he now deals 265% damage to the target and nearby. Okay, so reduction... Um, reduction in the attack stat, reduction in the damage means he's going to overall be dealing less damage. Um, but the target and nearby get minus 40% accuracy and this lasts for four turns. Now, 
the old special was minus 35% accuracy for three turns and the effect duration would reset if the target was healed. Uh, doesn't come into a play that often in my experience. He's usually dead before that happens. Um, but the minus 40% accuracy for four turns is a bit better. In fact, it's a lot better. I'll just say it because not because of the percentage of accuracy. That doesn't matter that much. But the extra turn really does make a difference. And if the target isn't healed, it's just it's still going to stick around for that extra turn. So, yeah, I do. I'm not sure. It's difficult because I like the <laughs> I like the damage. Now, I think the class just pushes this one over the edge. So I would use the costume version if I got it um, because he is of the road class. So that dodge is going to be annoying if he's on defense. And I do think he makes a really good defensive hero because he's fast. He hits three and he leaves uh, the three enemies that he hits with uh, blind um, for four turns. So yeah, pretty decent. He's a good upgrade on the original but he isn't doing anything new or fantastic. So, um, yeah, all three of them are actually absolutely brilliant heroes. So you'd be doing all right if you pull any of them from this portal. And there is one more. And this is the one I am sore about because I just wish absolutely, Jesus, where is she? I wish she was featured uh, because she is absolutely brilliant. Um this is going to take all day. <laughs> there we go. Right. Professor Leidenbrock. Right. So Professor Leidenbrock, she's a slow hero. We all know that. Um, she looks amazing, by the way. I love the art on this one. Um, I think that she's just gone from the sort of sexy librarian to um, something like a cross between the sexy librarian and like Lee Zhu. Um, some she's somehow gone to China and picked up a few things on the way. So yeah, I do like the art on this one better than the others. Um, she's a monk, which is actually really good. And I'll tell you guys why. So in the original version, she was a cleric. Um, the cleric uh, on the talent tree when you add emblems doesn't benefit from the 4% mana node. If you don't know what I'm talking about, um, if you open up the one of your heroes um let's just take uh someone who is i don't have a cleric level <laughs> this is great um geez do i have a cleric no i've got a monk though let's go with a monk so let's look at the talent grid um so you can see there right at the bottom there's a four percent mana bonus so that means it increases the speed of mana by four mana recovery by four percent um, and on the, on somebody like a cleric, actually, wait, I do have a cleric. Let's just, I need to go further down here. Um, so if we look at Rigard, for example, and we look at his talent grid, um, he gets a 2% mana bonus. So that increases the speed of mana recovery by 2%. Now that is important because of the bard heroes, um, so people like this guy, um, the Bard family increases the mana generation by 5% uh, for all solo heroes. Now, when you get a Bard hero on your team and you have a costume with a 5% mana bonus, which all of these new um, season four heroes do have, plus you have, you need, I think it's a level 27 Cyclops troop or a level 29 mana troop, a magic troop, um, then what's going to happen is you suddenly turn a slow hero if they're of the monk class or the um, or one of the classes with the 4% mana node, you'll suddenly be turning a slow hero into an average speed hero because they will go off within four tile matches. So just to go over it one last time, you need a bard hero. You need a costume bonus 5%. You need a class talent bonus of um, the 4%. And you need a level 27 um, Cyclops or a 20, 29 mana troop. Sorry, 29 magic troop on the hero. And you will then suddenly have turned Professor Leidenbrock, who's an excellent hero, into an average speed hero. So please note that. 
And um, it's definitely something that's worth working towards, trust me. Now, moving on. Um, so her passive is she starts the battle with 20% mana. So that's even even better. And as we know, that sort of gets her to fire her first turn off much quicker anyway. Um, and then stats-wise, we're looking at 778. So doesn't really matter because she's not dealing much de any damage. Um, 843 defense and 1552 on the health. Comparing to her original, very, very similar. There's really not much of a difference between the two at all. <sighs> Pardon me, guys. So her special skill is Dazzling Gleam. Sounds um, cool. Uh, it was Glorious Grace. And she is running at slow speed. We've spoken about that already. <laughs> She cleanses status ailments from all allies. Okay, so same as before. She then used to boost the health of all allies by 200. Not a, not a big boost of health. Um, and the boosted health can exceed max HP. She is now going to boost the health of all allies by 500. And the boosted health can exceed max HP. Okay, so that is a big, big difference. Um, 200 boosted health you can deal with, 500 is a lot more difficult to deal with. And then all allies regenerate 400 boosted health over four turns. So that's 100 boosted health a turn. The boosted health can exceed max HP and the effect duration res resets if the target receives status ailments. It was a boost of 600 over the next four turns. Um, so it's, there's been a reduction in the health boost over the following four turns, um, but the the upfront boost is much bigger. So yeah, I do like that because she's basically, if you manage to get that little secret formula going, she's going to be um, boosting the health of all allies at by 500 at average speed at nearly at actually fast speed for the first charge because she gets that passive as well um and then the reset of the boosted health when she receives an ailment is also really cool so yeah i do like professor leidenbrock i'm just sorry that she's not featured i think if she was featured instead of maybe elizabeth this would be a brilliant portal to summon in um so all in all I don't mind the new costumes. I know I might take a bit of flack for saying that, but I do think that there are some decent heroes in this portal. Um, and I do think that the costumes are okay. I do, don't think that they're amazing. I mean, don't get me wrong, the costume portal and the sort of costumes, the secondary costumes and some of the other costumes that have been coming out, even for the season three heroes are probably better than these. Um, but having said that, the season four heroes are, are all, well, a lot of them, I say all, but most of them are pretty damn great anyway. So I wish you guys all the best if you are going to drop some summons in this portal. Please drop us a like, subscribe if you found the video helpful, um, and please leave a comment. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Let me know what you think of these heroes, um, and I'll see you all again next time. Bye for now.